Hello crafty friend, it's Justine. Today I'm going to make eight cards using the Spreading Happiness Quick and Easy Card Kit of the Month from Spellbinders. And this one is from May 2023. So I am not quite sure if I have lost my unboxing footage or not. So if I have, I'm sorry, but um, I will put um, a little picture on the screen of what the card kit contains but if I did not lose it it will be on my channel and that will be the video that's uploaded right before this one but anyway this card kit is a quick and easy card kit so it has eight cards and envelopes 20 a2 card panels that are four and a quarter by five and a half there's puffy sentiment stickers puffy ampersand stickers which are kind of fun <laughs> I'm gonna use that on my first one here chipboard embellishments pattern paper die cut shapes tons of those sprinkles foam squares and adhesive tape so there's a ton of things in this kit and let's just dive right in I just want to mention I wanted to make or I typically make my card kit videos with materials just from the card kit because if there is someone out there who is a first-time card maker I just want to encourage that person to just grab the kit and make things with the kit but if you are a card maker already and you have things in your stash, I always want to encourage you to shop your stash too. So <laughs> with that being said, I am going to save these embellishments that came with the card kit for some shaker cards. I will give you just a little teeny hint of a preview because I did already make the card, but I'm just going to give you a little hint because I can't help it, you know? So here is the hint. I'm just going to peep it on the screen. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm going to show you. <laughs> anyway, if you want to see the whole card, you're going to have to come back to my channel. Let me check my calendar here. What day is that going to go up? But I used the large die of the month to make that one. Let's see. Oh, that will be tomorrow. Perfect. You don't even have to wait very long. Okay, <laughs> so for embellishments for my cards, with this card kit, I am going to just pull in a couple gems. I know, I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use yet, but I just really think that the embellishments from this card kit are perfect for a shaker card. So I am using that package for them. And I, I made a, a couple shaker cards. Look at how much is left over. That is a lot. So <laughs> anywho, let's just dive right into card number one. And like I said before, I was excited about the ampersand symbols. I thought that those were kind of fun. Those are the puffy stickers. Wow, that glue bottle just made a really beautiful sound in it. <laughs> anyway, the puffy stickers are pretty sticky. So I kind of have my die cut shapes stuck with that, but it's not permanently stuck yet. I love dainty floral pattern papers. I just think they're so pretty. Oh, today is the day. I did just get a Spellbinders order in the mail recently, and this is my first card. I'm going to try the, um, what is it called? The adhesive tape. Now, yes, the card kit does come with some, but for the sake of time, a little machine like this just goes a little quicker for filming. But I definitely use up those rolls because I'm gluing a lot. I make a lot of cards, and... <laughs> I'll take all the adhesive I can get and the adhesive that comes in the kit is quite nice because it's nice and skinny and it just really works well for pattern paper also like the the height of it as well is quite thin so it doesn't add bulk to the cards which I love unless and to be clear, bulk is totally different than dimension. Bulk can make things look kind of lumpy. Dimension is like purposeful lift, if you will. It's kind of like mascara. You know, you don't want clumps everywhere, but you want them, want the lashes high, higher to heaven, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speaking of adhesive, the liquid glue that I am using right now is the Barely Art liquid glue, and I just put it in this tiny glue bottle because cute little things make my heart happy, and it's easy to hold. So <laughs> here it is in this tiny glue bottle, and the Barely Art glue really just is my fave. 
So don't mind the fuzz on the back of the sticker. Such is life, you know? Anyway, if you're not aware, right now I'm going through a remodel. So I am in my temporary crafting space. And just to give you an update, if you're following along on the journey, I guess last night my husband finished the drywall. So that's exciting. And <laughs> I'm just really getting thrilled because things are kind of looking more like a room now. There's walls, there's a ceiling, we're making progress. <laughs> so I think the next step is to tape all of the drywall off on all the edges and seams and then the electrician will come back and kind of just check all of the outlets and then let's see what else do we have to do. Oh, windows. Yeah, <laughs> we're putting in really big windows in that room because it will be, I mean, technically it's a bedroom, but it's for our purposes right now in this house, we're using it as a crafting space. So <laughs> I would like a lot of light, um, but also being mindful that it is technically a bedroom. So we're not going to go crazy, but I don't know. It kind of depends on what your version of crazy is because we're putting in an eight foot window and a five foot, foot window. So I, I don't know. There's going to be light. <laughs> just put it that way. And I'm just thrilled. <laughs> I'm really thrilled. I went to Ikea. I did not want to go buy all new furniture for my crafting room. For one, I don't think I can really afford that. Um, for two, I do have furniture that I think will work really well for what I need. So I'm not going to buy more. But I'm starting to kind of plan out how things are going to be. So that's really exciting for me. Um, by the way, I do like this adhesive tape, this tape runner. It does work really well. I mean, I'd say it's comparable to others that I've tried in the past. We'll see how it goes. Um, it looks like there's a ton of tape on there, which I think is nice. So, and it has refillables. Love that. Um, I am a Spellbinders affiliate, so I feel very pulled to Spellbinders because of that. And I also really like their products, so I'm not being paid to tell you what I like <laughs> for... I'm not being paid to tell you, you know, buy this because it's the best if I don't really feel that way. So I'm, I'm just telling you what I think, you know, just being transparent. Okay, now on this second card, I have a pattern paper strip on the bottom here, and that's going to act as my ground. And we're going to make a little scene with this adorable mouse. <laughs> this is reminding me of the... <laughs> the class pet that we do not have anymore. Don't worry, she did not die. Um, but with complications for next year, I guess, and you know, it's really not complications. Let me rephrase that. With the amount of children I will have in kindergarten next year, we really don't have the space to have a hamster enclosure anymore. And if you know anything about hamsters, you know that Technically, they are very, I don't know how to say this. They're not treated well, generally speaking. Um, when I went and got my hamster, I <laughs> did tons and tons of research and looked, at, you know, to YouTube because that's what I do as a millennial. And um, yeah, <laughs> anyway, I found an amazing woman on YouTube She's fabulous. She's Canadian, I think, and I love her accent, by the way. Um, she really just gives actual information about hamster care that is a little more humane. So I really appreciated learning everything I could about hamsters from her. But anyway, long story short, um, if I wanted to have a hamster, I wanted to do it right. I wanted it to be a you know humane situation. So I had a very large hamster enclosure for her because if you don't know, in the wild, hamsters have the tendency to burrow. So they need a kind of a tall enclosure. So they have tons of bedding to burrow and they also have, they're very territorial. So they need a lot of space, contrary to PetSmart, Petco, etc. 
Um, but <laughs> anyway, it was huge. And my sweet little hamster, her name was Marble, went home with one of my students. And I know that he is going to just take very good care of her because he just loves talking about the <laughs> hamster, by the way, the hamster's name was Marble. Um, she was a dwarf hamster. Or I guess she still is. She's alive. Um, if, <laughs> if I can find a picture when I'm editing this, I'll pop a picture of her on the screen. She's just too cute. But anyway, she is off to a wonderful home with a very sweet little owner. So I digress. This card reminds me of Marble the hamster. <laughs> Talk about off topic. Okay, back to the card kit. <clears throat> Let's just <laughs> redirect. Now, this one, I am going to make two scenes. I don't really think I've done that on... I don't really think that I have done that on a card before, but these little houses really inspired me. And <laughs> the houses that are single houses are chipboard and the row of neighborhood houses, I guess you could say, is a die cut shape. And this plaid paper is going to act as the ground for both scenes. Now, you might ask yourself, what in the world is this card going to use for with, like, the occasion, our happy place? Well, it could be used for housewarming, or it could be used for a realtor to give to a client who just bought a house. It could be used as a welcome to the neighborhood kind of thing or moving neighbor, see you later, miss ya. I don't know, it could be for a lot of things. It honestly could be a birthday card because our happy place could be kind of subjective and you could have it be like, you know, home with you or, you know, something kind of on those lines. <laughs> but isn't this little car just so cute? Look how tiny that is. But it, it just fits the scene because the scene is extra tiny, which is, mm just so cute okay now this our happy place up in the top is going to act as the ground for the other scene no this is not a floating city but <laughs> it's supposed to be as if it's in the background so hopefully the tree pattern paper is kind of helping that situation out a little bit but I don't know if you see my vision you know you get it if not Hang in there because it's card number four is coming up in just a second. <laughs> and this little round tree is so cute. Okay. Now for our happy place. Okay, I'm not loving that that's offset. Okay, well, we're going to move on. For our happy place, I'm going to also just use some glue and plop it in the center. I'm gonna leave this card with no embellishments because of all the chipboard elements. It seems like it has enough dimension to me. All right, with this card, I wanted to really lean into the pattern paper. So I have this main pattern paper on the back, and then I have these two strips that I cut kind of on an angle. Anytime you're working at an angle with pattern paper for a card, I would always recommend first cutting the pattern paper to size so cut the edges to match your background and then from there you can add your angles so we are going to add the green first because i want this peachy orange color to kind of cover up the seam there so i'm just going to use you know, a very high-tech tool that nobody and their mother has, a pencil, sarcasm. Anyway, <laughs> just mark where that bottom is going to go. And then line it up, pretty simple. Then for the bottom part, I will just line that up with the edge of the background pattern paper. This seems to fit in my hand nicely, which I think is cute. Plus there's a heart here. Don't know if you saw that before. And actually I'm gonna put just a dot of liquid glue in the corner because that's going to get 
a lot of movement from you know your hand opening the card so just to reinforce that corner we'll use some liquid glue okay now we'll just hope that everything lines up all right good enough for me and then I'm gonna take two die cut shapes that are exactly the same and put them on top of each other like so but also not lose area for my chipboard sentiment something kind of like that is what I was envisioning I decided to move the sentiment down just so my flowers had room to kind of bend their the die cut shape itself kind of rears to the right veers <laughs> it kind of veers to the right so I'm gonna have the flowers kind of falling right about there and then have the sentiment go down there so let's put the flowers on it first and I'm gonna put the liquid glue on the bottom and I'm not going to put any glue up here because I'm gonna grab the foam squares now before I dive into the foam squares from this month's kit I'm going to use up some that I have on my desk because you know FIFO because I have those three on top that's gonna give me some dimension like so Ooh, I like that okay I'm gonna do the same thing to this flower for my sentiments I'm going to have them justified to the right which means hopefully I can line up the right side of the sentiments so they are going together kind of like that hopefully I can get them straight we'll see to line it up I am going to use my reverse tweezers these are from Spillbinders you can get other ones but because I just really like these ones I'm using them I also have reverse tweezers that have like a hook on the end let's see if I can grab those but I do like those as well just a little bit of a different kind of tool depending on what I'm up to it'll be helpful to have both let's see this one you can yeah you can see there's the the bend there but they're both reverse tweezers they both have this very nice little padding here let's see these are from EK tools this one's from Spellbinders, so you know all the tools I just I love the tools with crafting okay I think this one needs some embellishment because everything's looking a little pastel -y here so let's grab some gems anytime I have gems like this from Spellbinders I always just take my scissors and snip the side off so I can easily slide this in and out and then when I'm finished with them, I can put the gems back in there so they don't fall off of the packaging. But I can also figure out which one it is. Like this one says Crystal Mix Opal. This is like the third package of Crystal Mix at this point that I've got. <laughs> I just love, I love Crystal Mist Mix. <laughs> I have found that putting the gems on is probably the easiest with the tool in one like the stabby tool. I just think that that has just enough of a sharp point to kind of move the gem or crystal, but not have it get stuck too firmly. I think three is going to be okay on this one. I don't know. My eye is not liking that this one is in the middle of this flower. I thought it would be kind of clever and cutesy, but I'm not digging it. So let's just move it over. <laughs> the nice thing about the gems like this from Spellbinders, they're already adhesed. <laughs> they already have adhesive on them and you don't have to use any glue and you don't have to wait for anything to dry. They're all glued on, ready for you. Okay, we are halfway through. Next, let's do card number five, which is a rainbow card which is so fun because who doesn't love a cheerful little pink rainbow and a little butterfly? Just cute. Okay, so <laughs> before I get too crazy into this one, I just wanna mention I use two pattern papers on the background here. I have the pink and white stripes and then the 
rainbow paper and then I took a scrap of the pink and white stripes. It was right about here on the paper pad. You can see it lines up. But I'm just going to turn it to the side and have it be part of the background for my middle piece here. And it's going to be the back of my window as well. Right about there. This piece is four and a quarter wide, so I didn't have to do any trimming. Sometimes it's difficult to see if things are straight. Hey, that did not rip any paper. Way to go, adhesive. Sometimes it's hard to see if it's straight when I'm filming and looking at it from the side. You get to see the lovely view of <laughs> right above. Okay, now these are rainbow die cut shapes were in the pack and there's always two of each die cut piece. Sometimes if you get lucky, there's three. It must just be like a robot computer error when that happens, but I like to sometimes use them to mirror each other like this. And it really just makes that pattern paper pop a little bit more because these die cuts are here and there's foiling on this. Do you see that foiling? Oh, so pretty. Speaking of foiling, if you're a foiler, stay tuned for these this month's release. You can actually see it on the website right now, on the Spellbinders website right now, but <clears throat> I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in seeing that, but I love the glimmer plates and little sentiment packs that are coming out in a couple days, I guess. There's a collection being released that has some glimmer lines and some sentiments and there's, I don't, I don't know if I can talk about all of them because some of them are being released this month but they're not on the Spellbinders website yet so I'm just going to say stay tuned I guess. <laughs> um, and you'll see I guess when it's released but there's some really cool glimmer sentiments that are on the website so let, let's just talk about those um they're like glimmer card front sentiment they're card the glimmer sentiments that are kind of supposed to be at the card front and they say really fun things like call me pretty and buy me craft supplies or I don't know they're just kind of clever and quirky and I like that, you know, so I haven't gotten my glimmer machine out to use those yet, but I have been glimmering other things that are being released. So if you're a glimmer person, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can see what I make. These tiny gems are just so pretty. I love them. By the way, these little crystal gem packs are only like $3.99 when they're not on sale. And then when they are on sale, they're like $2 or something. Excellent purchase, if you ask me. All right, there is that card. Sorry, my chair. <clears throat> okay, and can we just talk about the cutest part of this card kit are the, the stinking frogs. They're so cute. So I have a couple different pattern papers here that I just wanted to use on this card. And I have things kind of like laid out how I, <laughs> I want it, but we'll see if that they end up in the same spot when I'm done with the card. Exactly the same, but it coordinates, so we're going with it. This darker piece was just a scrap from a different card that I was that I will be showing in just a couple minutes. Again, it's a frog one. And then this little frog. The other frog paper here is going to be used with that card too. So it's just so cute and the frogs look so happy and cheerful. So I am just all about this kind of card. Anytime there's animals in a card kit, I just, they're always cute and I just really like them. Okay. So my edge here is kind of like a almost like two dots wide so I'm just going to try to make that even on the other side 
and I don't know if you noticed but I just put that down pressed down and then I needed to move it and I ripped it up do you see any tearing here no this spelling adhesive is proving to be pretty darn good if I do say so myself okay so if you know me you know I change my mind when I'm crafting Sometimes I'll put something somewhere and it's not the right font or it's not where I wanted it to go. But if I can move things around, that gives me a little more time to be crazy. Okay. <laughs> also, with the sentiment on this card is just everything. It says the best things in life aren't things. And if that ain't the truth, come on. They aren't. Okay. Then we have the lily pads and I figured I'd put the lily pads kind of by this little frog here and there's tons of lily pads in this card kit so if you're a frog person you're gonna like this one I just know it okay and yes I did plan to put the flower on the right but did it make it there no so it's going on the left there we go okay and then we have the crowns which are just too cute those are just going to kind of float right about there. I love the way that this yellow pops. It just really works with all the green. There we go. And then the crowns. Where did I want these little crowns? I don't remember. Well, they're going to go on the bottom here. That's a little border. I feel like this card needs something else over here that's green. So I'm going to pull in an extra lily pad and pop it in. Look at all the foiling on these die cut shapes. They're just so cute. And there's foiling on this chipboard frame. Can you see that? Foil, foil, foil. All right. Moving along. Next card. Now this one is another diagonal kind of card which I hadn't done one in like two years and I don't know why. Sometimes I get kind of stuck in different layouts or just trying to do something different than last time and sometimes it's good to go back to the basics and just do what I know. So I am doing that here. I really could have saved some of this pattern paper and just left it be just a piece because the whole thing isn't going to show but that's just life so I'm gonna just gonna put these down and we'll do that our we'll build our scene this cake is clearly a birthday cake so I just kind of leaned into that for the theme of this card is kind of birthday and cute <laughs> so the donuts are there as well because who says you can't have a donut on your birthday I say you can. <laughs> um, there's the flowers in the background that are going to kind of be the landing place for the cake and the donuts to be. And I'm just going to put some glue down and get those set so when I put the cake and donuts on, everything should just lay it flatly lay it nice and flat on top. I still have not tried the Glad press and seal hack for die cuts and <laughs> I don't know why I haven't. I just I just haven't. I don't have any in my house so I'm just not inclined to go out and buy it yet when I can buy gem packs <laughs> and adhesive but I do want to try that hack sometime. I was considering doing a live on my channel. I don't know if anyone would be interested in that at all. Sometimes I can find that lives are a little uh, pokey and putsy and everyone's just kind of like, oh, hello, okay, I'll just wait for people to join and it's just kind of awkward. But the way that some people do it is just really inspiring. Like Nancy Stamps, her lives are just, they're just fun. I don't know. If you haven't watched those, check it out. Nancy Stamps. 
and she does stamps wars and if you don't know what that is you have to try watching the stamp wars so <laughs> go to her channel find stamp wars you're welcome anyway not that I want to like I don't want to copy her at all but I do want to go live I think that would be fun you could craft with me um, if you're not a live person that's fine I'm not really into watching a whole lot of people live but I do watch Nancy live and that's fun but if you want to watch me live let me know <laughs> you'd really get the unedited version I don't know if the internet's ready for all of that yet but I don't know <laughs> as bizarre as this video might seem to you it is edited all the coughs and lawnmowers and loud neighborhood <laughs> motorcycles <laughs> uh, what else the train I now have a grandfather clock that's fun and new I I'm just obsessed with that that clock I don't know <sighs> now this is the final frog now this is the final card it's a frog card so <laughs> I'll just talk about my grandfather clock as I do this frog card if you would have told me five years ago that I would be on YouTube talking about a grandfather clock making a card I would have said you're nuts because I wasn't really even card making five years ago I definitely was not on YouTube let's see five years ago in May oh I know what I was doing five years ago in May I was graduating from college and I also was accepting my current job which is a teacher at a lovely school <laughs> I guess technically I have a different job now same school but different position anyway I accepted a job as a third and fourth grade teacher fabulous I loved it but just being frank which <laughs> I just love kindergarten so I love my third and fourth graders but I love kindergarten better just I just love seeing the growth it's just amazing over one year they are just totally different in the best way anyway these frogs are so cute look at them okay I put the girl frog on the left and the boy frog on the right because their little eyeballs look like they're looking at each other and I guess I just kind of assumed girl and boy but this one has a crown maybe he's the king frog the, the prince the frog prince we'll call him the frog prince and then this one has a lot of eyelashes and painted toes do you see her toes <laughs> we're calling this one the princess anyway we're gonna have these little dragonflies flying around above them and we need dimension on these dragonflies I know a few people asked me about doing some kind of a craft room tour once I get back into my main space um, maybe I won't say no I won't say yes because I don't know how that's gonna look because when we're done with remodeling that room um, my husband's gonna move to the dining room which is still in our main living space and the furniture from there might have to go in my crafting room or the living room just for a little bit so it might not be um, YouTube ready but you know maybe I will make a video anyway and it'll just be what it is you know but <laughs> I'm not the person to go out and buy brand new furniture because I'm on YouTube or buy brand new furniture just to film a video to look good <laughs> on the internet um, if that's you cool for you but that's just that's not me so um, if I do a filming or if I do a craft room tour it's gonna just be what it is you know so <laughs> you might see the good the bad and the ugly uh, we'll see we'll just leave it at that we will see now this little charming die cut piece I just glued two of them together like I said before two die cut shapes come in the kit so I have two of them there I couldn't decide if I wanted to put this on a paper but I really wasn't wanting this to be 
like the main point of the card so I think I'm gonna put it on the lily pad down here and I think this could be a really cute little anniversary card as the two frogs are kind of looking at each other they look like they're on a date <laughs> a dinner date trying to catch dragonflies <laughs> things are getting weird okay I better be just better move on okay well this was my last card um, to review the tape from Spellbinders, I'd say I like it a little bit better than the regular tape runner that I have. I would like to give it maybe a little bit more time to make like a, a statement like I will about the Barely Art liquid glue that it is the best liquid glue that you can get for crafting, <laughs> um, for card making at least. Um, but I'm gonna hold off on my rating. I'd say if I had to rate this one, I'd give it an 8 out of 10, just because sometimes the the glue on this one gets stuck up in here, and to refill these is really not even cost effective to refill this one, because buying replacement whole packages of these is cheaper than the, re the replacements, at least that's what I have found. But I'm gonna give this Bellbinders one a little bit more time to really give a good review on. I Again, I don't want to give a review about something if I haven't really given it the college try, if you will. I'd like you to be on the lookout for your favorite card and then let me know in the comments your favorite. All right, now that I've made eight cards, let's take a look. Like I said before, be on the lookout for your favorite. Here's the frog prince and princess. The birthday with donuts. The other froggy one. Butterflies and rainbows. Big flowers. The neighborhood. The mouse house. <laughs> and the big ampersand. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Let's see, looking at all of these together, they really go well together. I don't know if I said that before, but I probably said it in the unboxing. I think that this one is my favorite with the two flowers, just because it looks a little different than my typical style. But I'd say overall, the cards really coordinate well together. And if you're looking for a Mother's Day gift, you could certainly make a bundle of cards like this and you know once everything's dry take all of your cards put them in a little bundle like so and add eight envelopes take a little bit of the crafting string or the butcher string do I even have some on my desk you know I don't know where that could be but you could even embroidery floss. You could even take that and then wrap it in a little bow. And that could be a really sweet Mother's Day present for anybody. You could give that to um, a daughter, an aunt, a godmother, even a teacher would like this as an end of the year gift. Especially if you made thank you cards as a teacher, you need thank you cards. So if you're a card maker out there, you have kids in a school and you need an end of the year teacher gift, Give them thank you cards. They're gonna use, they're gonna get used. They won't just become clutter. Just saying. <laughs> anyway, um, just some gift ideas for you. Plus, you get the enjoyment of making the cards, which is really just the best. <laughs> so, like I said, pick a favorite. Let me know in the comments, and I hope you have a wonderful day. If you're getting this card kit, let me know in the comments what your favorite element is about card kits as well. I go back and forth with that for me. I really love the pattern paper, but I also love the die cuts. So let me know what your favorite is. Anyway, have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Bye.